What's up? I'll see you now, yeah. A little bit quick. Okay. Definitely, we're excited to, to face the next challenge in the, in the Guinness Six Nations. It's um, and we're back at home. That's probably why we're excited in front of another capacity crowd here at BT Murrayfield. Coming off the back of a, a strong performance last week and a good start, so we're, we can't wait to to get out here tomorrow in front of our own people and, uh, and put in another performance. How much do you draw on the, the memories of two years ago, both the way you played and, and, and the feelings and the elation of, of, of getting that victory over Ireland? A little bit, uh, but ultimately we've, we've got to look forward. It's a new game and uh, it's nil-nil come the start of the game, obviously, tomorrow. So it's it's a clean slate, as it always is. And I think we can take a few learnings from, from last year when we played over there. We probably had a couple of opportunities to score and we missed the opportunities. And against a, a quality team like Ireland, you've got to take your opportunities. So if, if, we, um, if we create any tomorrow, uh, it's important we take them. Uh, like any team, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they were disappointed um, losing at home last week, but that's not our worry. Our worries about ourselves, our worries, uh, our record here at home, which we're uh, extremely proud of. And again, we want to build on it. Um, and we've had a good week's training, uh, and we're ready to go. Greg, many people feel this game is a game Scotland really need to win to prove that, that you can compete for the title. That, that all the progress has been building towards something. Is this how the, the squad feel about this particular match? Yeah, it's probably a fair comment, and uh, absolutely, probably uh, we agree in terms of if we want to go on and, and compete and, and take the next step. It's it's games like this you need to win against quality opposition, and Ireland are certainly that. They, they've proved that over the last couple of years in the championship, and uh, they're one of the best teams in the world. Uh, so we've got a lot of respect for them. And so if we're going to win tomorrow, we're going to have to play um, one of our best games. There's been a lot of talk about an Irish backlash, but. On the other hand, do you think there's perhaps England have maybe sown some seeds of doubt? We saw when England came up here last year and lost after a long winning run that they, they struggled to recover. Are you hoping that a similar case might be with Ireland? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> For sure, and I think any time you get beat, there's, there's a reason behind it. And you know, we've analysed the, the game well from last week, but as I said, we've analysed uh, the game from a couple of years ago uh, and last last season as well in the championship. And um, all that mainly always comes back to us as a group, and um, you know what we want to get out of it. So we're, we feel as though we've prepared really well, and that it's up to us now to to take that step tomorrow and and get out in the field and get a winning performance. You meet Ireland and Japan in the World Cup in the opening game. Is this? A a chance to strike a psychological blow, or is that sort of too far in the distance to you thinking about? Well, we certainly won't be thinking about it tomorrow, but uh, obviously it all helps, you know, if you can get a win and going into a massive comp like the World Cup, it's important, um, but it's about the Six Nations at the minute. We want to be successful in this tournament, so, you know, we're simply concentrating on the next game, and that's Ireland. Obviously there was lessons from the, the England victory and things you can take from that, but Scotland strengths and a bit different from England's how important is it that you, you impose your own game on Ireland but rather looking to, to mirror what England yeah, very important, and that's you know everybody's um, you know talking about the game last week and the game's gone last week. It's about the game this week, and so we are we feel we can cause any team in the in the world problems with our attacking game, and, and we plan to do that again tomorrow. If we can get our hands on the ball, create quick ball, and that's that's within our control to be able to do that. So again, it always comes back to us with, within the team if we can create opportunities. It's up to us to then take them, and uh, on the flip side, you know, we want a strong defensive performance as well. We, we defended well for 60 minutes last week, 65 minutes. Italy had three points, and then we were disappointed with, with the way we finished the game. And there's no way we can have a performance like that in, in terms of the last 15, 20 minutes against a, a team like Ireland. Greg, there's criticism back home in Ireland that Ireland have become predictable and easy to read. What do you think? Uh, I don't think they're that at all. Um, you, you see some of the way they launch off line outs, uh, very smart, very clever and if you're not switched on they'll, they'll catch you out with little funny plays and, and that's down to their coaches and the way their players obviously train within a week um, and when they do come direct you've got to stop that as well and, and that's why Ireland have been successful over the last couple of seasons so and, you know, as I said before I think they're the second ranked best team in the world and they're there for a reason. Now Ireland used the excuse of the bus being late 
uh, arrived with dry food two years ago. Did that annoy you that they used that excuse? We can use any excuse to like as long as we win, <laughs> uh, to be honest. But uh, you know we can't control that. Uh, we never knew that at the time, and uh, you know it's just one of the things. So uh, we'll ask maybe the pipe band to be a bit slower tomorrow and see what happens. So it's just an extra bit of edge now between, let's say, Ireland and Scotland now between obviously the provinces, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, you know, I suppose we saw Munster play uh, Glasgow there as well a few months ago down in Park. What do you think? There's an extra bit of edge there. I think I think maybe yes, and and I think it's again it's it's a massive confidence boost for us in terms of the Edinburgh and Glasgow boys going so well um, in the league um, and in Europe as well, and it shows that we've got more strength and depth now throughout the country, and, uh, and I think that's coming to fore in, in the national team. So we're, we we can't wait to get out there tomorrow and, and pull on our Scotland jerseys again and get our feet on the ground and and take the game to Ireland. How does the weather change? How is going last play? Um, yeah, we'll need to see what it's like tomorrow. Um, I think it's good for us. We're at home in the weather like this. We probably um, the way the wind is in Murrayfield sometimes can be pretty tricky. So hopefully, with our experience of playing here a little bit, obviously more than the Irish boys, we can use that to our advantage. And if it comes in like it's meant to, and um, it's difficult, um, certainly more difficult for your nines and tens in terms of your kicking game, passing game, everything really. So, but, but it's vitally important. You. The half-backs give the team direction uh, on a day like that and, and make sure you get the ball in the right areas of the field uh, to, to allow the team to score points. Will it dominate the game? Will it be the narrative of the game? Well, potentially, yeah. Um, you know, I think everybody knows the sort of the way Scotland want to play the game and we won't really deviate from that, but we've got to be smart and, and pick our times when we want to play. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll get a gauge on the weather when we, when we get here tomorrow and, and uh, we'll have a game plan in place if we need to use it. Thank you. Yeah. See a few few updates today, yeah? <laughs> okay, we'll get underway shortly. The first section will be for broadcast online and agencies, and that'll be about eight minutes. And then after that, we will have ten pm embargo section. So um, cameras, you will you're we're happy to stay on, but it'll be for GVs. Only after that point. Yeah, just the way. Matt, uh, what did you have to say to the boys earlier in the week about the, the Italy game? Have you ironed out all those issues that cropped up late in the game? Yeah, listen, um, we were pretty disappointed with how we probably finished the game. You know, I was sitting in the coaching box feeling quite uh, happy with myself at 65 and really. Uh, <laughs> Despondent at uh, 80 minutes, but listen, I think there was a few things. I think you know that change when Hoggy scored a try, which was a try, and um, you know they suddenly got the ball and they they had to do something in the last 15 minutes. We got a yellow card and we put on some of our reserves. I think you know just a little bit. We probably just started thinking about next week. You know, unfortunately, and that's never great when you're a defensive coach conceding that. But uh, we talked about it, we ironed out a few things, and we certainly won't be dropping off in the last 15 minutes of this game. Certainly. Tackles your team has to make against Ireland yeah. in the last two fixtures. Is this defensively the biggest test in international rugby at the moment? Yeah, I think uh, Ireland's very good at the game plan that they play in terms of holding on position, and um, there's certainly going to be a lot of big collisions out there, probably from both sides. And yeah, certainly uh, over the years playing Ireland and, and even some of the um, teams from uh, Ireland when I was at Glasgow, you, you end up making a lot of tackles. So certainly we need to be kind of making those tackles on the front foot and doing everything we can to slow down the ball and make it difficult for them. Every game, of course, the championship is important. How much do you think this match will shape Scotland's campaign? Oh, it's huge, isn't it? Like, you want to win all your home games. It's the second game of the round. You know, we got off to a good start with a bonus point. So if you manage to get a win um, in the second game here, you know, you set yourself up well for the, the last couple of games, don't you? the last three. So it's a huge challenge. Ireland's a very good side. You know, they, they, they weren't at their best last week. So I'm sure... Sure, they'll uh, they'll be a lot better than they were last week, but um, so will we. So, do you feel the weather conditions will suit one team or the other, or is it going to be more of a level? Uh, yeah, listen, I think there's probably going to be a lot more kicking in the game. Certainly, I think, um, and maybe with the wind, and depending on if you have the wind or you don't have the wind, and things like that. So, I think maybe some of the tactics might change slightly or there'll probably be more kicking in the game so I think both teams have got a pretty good kicking game we showed um, that we could put the ball behind uh, Italy and put them under pressure and um, and they've got a good box kicking type game and pressure game as well so I think you'll see a lot of uh, that kind of kick chase kick cycle kick diffusion type um, part of the game is going to be huge. 
because I mean the arrow can, can vary their attack, but is the, the aerial side of it the one that you can really you know, you know that's coming and you know that you can prepare for it? Yeah, we've done a lot of work, um, you know, on the kick pressure. We've done a lot of work on, um, you know, getting up and, and taking the ball. And you probably do that most weeks, but certainly we know Ireland's very good at that part of the game. So, and, and we need to be as good, but um, they'll probably be expecting a little bit the same from us. Matt, how do you anticipate the changes from Ireland's point of view will change their performance? S sorry, say that again? How do you anticipate the changes to their starting team? Oh, right. Yeah, listen, I think, Gabe, you look at their side and I was just browsing through it again just before I came in. I mean, they, they've got an excellent side still, even though they've had a couple of injuries. Um, I think um, the way probably Joe runs his team, they're all, you know, guys coming in know the game plan pretty well and he'll have them understanding what he wants from them. So um, even though, you know, they would have probably wanted to start with a few of those other guys, I still believe that that side that they've put out is an extremely good side and um, I'm sure that those guys will adapt and and mould into the game plan that he wants. You're obviously not expecting um, a below par performance from Ireland two weeks in a row. No, no. I'd imagine they'll be a lot better. And listen, you've got to, you've got to give probably credit to England as well because I thought England was superb and, um, you know, they, they played a certain game plan against Ireland and they were very big on the collisions and, you know, they stifled Ireland and um, it's amazing how how certain things can change, you know. Um, yeah, just on the back of performances with a lot of teams, you know, one, one week you have a really good performance and everyone's patting you on the back and then the next week you might have a, a subpar performance and everyone's probably writing you off. So um, we're expecting a very good island side to turn up um, tomorrow and, uh, and, and we need to be at that level as well. Tomorrow, and is it a case of it's a different story trying to stop it? Yeah, and listen, I read those comments. I mean, um, for me, I've probably um, I've been involved with the Scottish team for six years, um, even too with Glasgow with Joe Smith when he was with Leinster. I would I'd say they're far from predictable for me. I think they're excellent. Their coaching team is an excellent team. I think they're probably one of the best coaching teams in the world in terms of how they play the game. They've always got moves, you know, even over there last year they had probably two scrum moves that caught us by surprise and um, what I've found over the years with trying to prepare for them is they'll always have something up their sleeve and they've always got these signature type plays that they're very good at pulling out. So our defensive systems have got to be really good. We've just got to, we don't know exactly what's coming, so we're just going to be um, really strong within our systems. But no, they've got a good kicking game, they've got a good power game when they get in the 22, and then further up the field, they've got those kind of swapped signature type plays which are hard to manage. So, no, um, it's always a, um, a tough task when you're preparing for Ireland. Scotland had something up their sleeves two years ago with the third try off. So yeah. Yeah, we've got. Listen, we've um, Gregor and Mike Blair, and um, are very good coaches in terms of looking at the opposition and kind of coming up with plays. And um, Danny Wilson too in the in the lineout. So we've certainly got a couple of moves, and which we feel that hopefully might be able to. Um, you know, pull them apart in certain areas, and you have that for every team, don't you? So hopefully they come off tomorrow. Okay, we're just moving to ten o'clock. <laughs>